so I'm here with Lauren Schultz and he is going to run through some of his kit that he climbs with on the daily and go ahead and lay it out for me uh very basic Man. got my funky beaver harness 2.0 I got a double bridge I like a double bridge because um oftentimes I am in a larger tree double crouching happens or two systems or whatever it is I find that when I have it from the same point it's not quite as comfortable as having it from two points, two different points. It's just personal preference. So I have a swivel on this one. I like having a swivel. That's not a swivel I've seen. I see Enigma from camp. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, it's a nice little device that's uh, easily inspectable, or easily inspected. You can take it apart too pretty easily, but it doesn't, there's no worry of it coming apart on its own, which right. is nice. Uh, secondary bridge right here. And if you just go around to the side, oh, I also have suspenders, which I kind of like for when I have larger uh, saws or extra rigging gear. This is my little um, chainsaw stowing. Uh, I guess this is called a buck carrier or something like that. Got the recoil, which Did I like for the reach. Did you bend that open a little bit on the buck? Uh, it's a little bit bent open. Okay. <laughs> just a hair. I uh, also kind of um, tied a little knot in my recoil just to to suck up the attachment a little closer because yep. I find that it hangs a little low the way it comes originally. And then putting this here is just an easy kind of on and off for me. I put a used clip here so I can swap out saws for my uh, topper to rear handle. I always keep a T-wrench or scrinch on me. Um, I can't tell you how many times I work for the company and they don't, ha they don't have it, they can't find it, mm -hmm. something like that. I have one William carabiner here. I usually have my quickie on it. Uh, also an extra carabiner here for just whatever. This is my little knee ascender. Uh, you uh, probably a... might recognize oh, yeah. a bit of that from Morgan Thompson. It's, uh, yep. no, no tooth, not a tooth cam, so it doesn't beat up the rope and just clips to my evos or if i'm not wearing that i have like a little strap for my foot cell phone goes here other end of my lanyard i keep a strap for redirects I don't always need to jump through a crotch or sometimes there's not a crotch and i'll just use a strap clip into that this little guy is really handy for taking the tail of your rope and just making a secondary system and this little snap is a sweet little five dollar tender instead of having a $20 pulley or, or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, $70 hitch climber or whatever. You can make a real yeah. quick and dirty uh, extra system just to help get you where you're going. Handsaw and then my little lanyard. I use this little uh, Dyneema here for if I want to dead end the lanyard. I like it a little better than a Prusik or a Thimble just because it's much lower profile. And sometimes I take it off even when I don't when I don't anticipate that being a situation I might run into in the tree, I, I take it off. I also, in order to keep this thing a little shorter, I've taken to putting it in the middle and stowing it like that just to make a little extra loop to shorten the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then I always keep a little throw line or a little throw ball with this little clip too. This will clip into my splice or if I don't have a splice, I'll stick the rope in here and not jam it because it doesn't always fit through here. And that lives on this little clip in front of me. What do you use that throw line for typically? When, or that ball? Well, the throw way is just to advance instead of making a monkey's fist. Right. Yeah, that, that's a trick. Mark Chisholm, I think, was the first one I ever saw present that. And he is pretty much the godfather of a lot of modern day climbing. Yeah. That guy knows some efficiency, some tricks. He's the man. You know, these guys are going to be annoyed at how many things on there you can't actually buy because they're all custom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. Oh yeah, some of that is, is product testing stuff. Yep. It's great though. No, it's awesome. I mean, that's that's where things are going. And I like how it just shows too that a lot of these things you can make. You can just tweak something that exists. And yeah. show you another thing that I bring with me often. Oh yeah, this is cool. <clears throat> Micro rigging line. You may have seen me use something similar, uh, eight millimeter bailout for just natural crotch rigging or just a little small. We're talking small stuff here. talking like I'm out on the tips making end weight cuts and there's 
delicate things I can't quite cut and hold and uh, there's nowhere to throw, something like that. So I'll take this little guy, natural crotchet. If there's no natural crotchet available or if I don't want to uh, damage bark on like a smooth bark tree, I'll have a figure eight like device, which I don't have on me right now, but we'll strap for that and I can run it through that. Otherwise, I'll just create wraps on the piece I'm taking or another piece that I'm taking, use the, use the stub of it and lower from there. And this is very economical. Yeah, three and strand. You can splice it yourself very easily. I mean, these are non-locking snaps. We're talking about small pieces here. Nothing, nothing major, not very dire situations, but this is a handy little tool. Yeah, it keeps you from using the tail of your climb line to do some lightweight rigging. And then what are you, your climb system you're typically using? I like the rope runner a lot. Uh, I bring I bring a rope wrench setup with me. I always bring a 150 line, unless I know I'm doing much taller stuff, then I'll bring a 200 footer. And then I bring something in the way of like 100 or 120. I have options there. I can create like a spider system or I can have a, a secondary system as I use as a moving rope system or I have other little hybrid tricks. And then I bring a couple different anchors Always, always have two throw cubes or throw frisbees in that case. I've recently been carrying one of these buck savers. That's great for making a canopy based uh, spider system. That to me is very, it's, it's a very efficient way to do a tree that there's going to be a lot of uh, up and down. Now let's say I got like a broad spreading tree and I've got to go work this section, but to get over to this section, I'd have to go up and over to get a good rope angle. If I get, if I work my way to the top, send a line out this way and send a line out the other way, I can work this down, move laterally, and then work this up. And then I'm not wasting an ascent going back up to work that down, if that makes any sense. And then this is a Petzl Eject, which I, I like just because of you can really lower this thing in a controlled manner if you plan it properly. As long as you take one redirect, maybe I can show you with the tail on my line here. If you guys haven't seen the eject, I've got a quick video of it on my channel. Just kind of generally how it works. But what Lawrence is saying here is critical because obviously this big old aluminum thing, you don't really want it to come crashing to the ground doing your residential work, working around a lot of concrete, rocks, whatever. I'm just banging into the house. Yeah, right. <laughs> so as long as you've taken some sort of redirect with the climbing end or the retrieval end, this throw line will end up fair leading over whatever redirect you took. And then from that point, you'll be able to control the descent of the device, which is real nice. I'm not sure why that, that's not like their, one of their huge marketing points, to be honest. So let's say I've, I've climbed over here. This is my redirect, I'm done. I go to pull this thing and now, the, uh, the redirect will now be what catches this guy and keeps it from plummeting to the ground uncontrolled. So now it just falls into whatever redirect it was or, or whatever your retrieval end went over. Um, and that's great too because it's, it's nice that this thin strap is all that flips up and over the crotch instead of this bulky bit of kit here because even in a tight crotch this comes out real easy. But sometimes this can get a little jammed up if you have a, a tight crotch tree like on like a linden or something or out here it'd be like a monterey cypress or something so this can get a little hung while that's coming down but you could just i mean i've only had one situation where it's actually stuck you end up lifting it up and and working the thing out and lowering it and mm -hmm. i find it even though it's a little bit more complicated than a ring and ring the just not having it ever get stuck is worth its weight <laughs> gold seriously I think that's probably the number one reason why I don't use a friction saver as often as I probably should. I just don't want to deal with retrieval. Fair enough. 
Awesome. Thanks for that, Lawrence. Rock on. And climb safe, you guys. Catch you later.